Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? It's Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a different type of video. Today I'm going to do a beer review, look at some of my favorite beers that are available in Spain, and we're going to try four beers today. Now, if you live in Spain, most likely you are familiar with these four beers. We've got the San Miguel Select, we've got the Cruz Campo Gran Reserva, we've got Amba Morena is the cerveza, and this one here is the 1906 from Estrella Galicia. Now these beers are a little bit stronger than the normal beers that you will find in bars and restaurants in Spain. Normally you'll just get a lager beer on tap in Spain, fairly traditional lager beers, around 5% alcohol, 4.55%. And all of these beers here are over the 5.5% alcohol mark, which as I said, makes them a little bit stronger than the traditional beers that you'll find in bars and restaurants in Spain on tap. Now I'm gonna go through the individual beers one by one, but before I do, a little bit of a story about beer in Spain. Beer in Spain is the most popular drink in the country. Some people would think that wine is the most popular drink, but that is not the case anymore. I think around the mid-1980s, beer overtook wine, and uh, Spaniards love to consume this drink here, which is beer. And over the last 10, 15 years in Spain, the amount of beers available has increased. You can get lots of these special types of beer, what they call cerveza especial or tostadas. There's also lots of IPA beers available nowadays. I'm going to do another video on Spanish IPAs shortly, so stay tuned for that. But as I said, beer the most popular drink in the country. And I think Spaniards are only second to Germans when it comes to beer consumption in the European Union, but don't quote me on that. And another thing about these four beers that I have chosen today is that they come from some of the most popular breweries in Spain. So we're going to start with this one here, which is the San Miguel Selecta. And if we have a look at the can, we can see Cerveza Tostada Extra. I'll try and find the amount of alcohol, 6.2% in this particular can, so quite strong. I'll hold that up to the camera there so that you can see it. So a strong beer, Tostada. It also says that it has three malts and three types of hops. So we'll open this one up, get ready for the crack. There we go, and we'll pour this into the glass. I like a slow pour when it comes to beer. Unlike uh, a lot of people in Spain, they prefer uh, a head on their beer, quite frothy. I do not, as I said, I prefer a smaller head on the beer. As we can see, the color of this beer, quite dark, uh, a darky browny color. Let's get some aromas. And another thing I'm gonna say is that I'm not an expert on beer. I like to drink beer. I drink beer fairly regularly but I'm not an expert. So if you're looking for fancy vocabulary to describe beer, you're not gonna get it in this video. But what you're gonna get is a look at some premium Spanish beers. And another thing about these four beers, supermarket beers, is that they're all under one euro in price. I think only one costs more than a euro. I think it's this one here, around a euro five cents, but not expensive when it comes to beer. So onto the taste test here the uh, San Miguel Selecta Cerveza Tostada. Let's try it. Now you can really notice that that is a strong beer, flavorsome beer, and as I said, different from the typical beers that you'll find in bars and restaurants. On a hot summer's day, perhaps not the best beer to drink, but on a cooler day, maybe a spring day, an autumn day, a winter day, this would be a decent beer. And you can really taste those hops and the different types of malts that are in this beer. I can't taste any other types of flavors there, but a good beer nonetheless. And as I said, for around a euro, a decent beer in my opinion. So I'll park that one over here, get a fresh glass, and we'll move on to number two, which is this one here, Cruz Campo Gran Reserva. Unique character here on the logo as well, 6.4%, so another strong beer. And this is a 100% malt beer. It says that it has an intense flavor. It has a, a balanced body. And uh, you can also taste some fruit apparently in here. And as I said, unique character. So we'll crack this one open. Now Cruz Campo, the normal Cruz Campo, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole unless I'm at a chiringuito in Malaga. Uh, that is the only time that I would try Cruz Campo because I don't rate it as a beer. Some people will like Cruz Campo as a beer, but I don't. 
Now, I'm going to compare the two. Now, I don't know if there's much difference there in color. I think this one's a little bit darker, so the San Miguel Select a little bit darker. This one here a little bit lighter, but around the same alcohol levels as I said before. So let's try this one. Apparently, there's some fruit in this one. Let's see if we can taste it. Yeah, this one's a little bit milder, if that's a word that you can use to describe beer, not sure. Milder would be the taste. This one was quite strong, very hoppy. This one, not necessarily so. 100% malt, as we saw before, and apparently they're, they're trying to pass it off as a, a full-bodied beer, and uh, that indeed it is. But uh, be careful drinking these beers because they are quite high in alcohol, and uh, you'll notice that I'm only drinking a little bit of each beer, so as not to get too drunk. So a little bit more of this one. Yeah, I can't really taste the fruit, but as I said before, I'm not a beer connoisseur. Now we'll move on to the next one. Before I do, so we've had uh, Cruz Campo, San Miguel, two of the biggest breweries in Spain. Cruz Campo coming from the south, San Miguel coming from not sure where. I think it's the Valencia region, but today they're in a, a partnership or they were bought out by uh, Mao. It's called Mao San Miguel now in Spain, one of the biggest breweries. Now the next one here, you might not find in your particular area. In Madrid you can. It's from Ambar, as we can see here and they call themselves a, a small brewery, more of a boutique brewery, let's say, from the Aragon uh, Autonomous Community, and Zaragoza, I think. Let's see if we can get a description. Tostada also, suavemente, so it's a smooth toasted beer. I'm not sure what the word in English would be for toasted beer, but again, the darker beers. And when it comes to alcohol content, we're at 5.5% here. I'll put that one on the screen so that you can see it. And uh, this, over the last few months or so has become one of my favorite beers. Let's crack it open because this is a brewery, as they say, a smaller brewery. Uh, before it was only available in Aragon, but now it's extended as most uh, breweries are around the country. But that's another characteristic about Spanish beer is that they, they tend to be located in all of the different regions. Every different region has its own favorite type of beer. For example, if you go to Catalonia, you'll find uh, Estrella Dam as the main beer from the Dam Breweries, Galicia, Estrella Galicia that we'll get onto soon, Aragon, Ambar, uh, San Miguel all over the country, Mao all over the country, and Cruz Campo, mainly in Andalusia. Now, let's do a comparison here. So this was the first one that I drank, the darkest one, I think. This one a little bit lighter, that was the uh, Cruz Campo. And this one here, the Ambar Morena, which, as I said, one of my favorite beers because it's a relatively new beer uh, on the market. I haven't seen it before this year. I think it uh, popped up maybe end of last year, or at least where I live in Spain. Maybe if you live in uh, Aragon, it's been there sooner. But where I live, that is not the case. And uh, this beer here doesn't have much of a description. It just says that it's made on the shores of the Ebro River, which is the main river that goes through the city of Zaragoza. So let's try this one. As I said, one of my favorites. And the aromas are completely different to the other two beers that I've tried. You can smell the fruit. I'm not sure what type of fruit it is, but you can smell a type of fruit in there. And that is a, a milder tostada. And tostadas, as I said, one of my favorite types of beer in Spain. And for the price of this, around 85 cents a can, sometimes 79 since it can in the supermarket, an absolute bargain. I'm going to drink a little bit more of this one because I like it. Mm, great. So I'll put that one down over here now. Try not to get too drunk, which is why I'm only drinking a small amount of beer, as you would have picked up on. Now, the final one. This is the 1906 La Mil Nueve. This is from a brewery in Galicia, as I said, which is taking Spain by storm currently. Uh, fast becoming the most popular brewery in the country, Hermanos Rivera from A Coruña, I think, in the north of Spain. This is another beer coming in quite strong at 6.5%. I'll put that up there so you can see it. And also it's got here a, a bitterness uh, ranking as well and a color ranking. So it says 25 on the bitterness ranking and 16.5 on the color ranking. I'll put that up there to see if you can see that. So uh, that's unique. I haven't seen that on the other beers. And we can see here that the slogan is beers for an immense 
minority. So that is the type of public that they are trying to attract with these beers. And as I said, this brewery and the brand Estrella Galicia uh, from the Hermanos Rivera Brewery, very, very popular nowadays, spreading around the country. Now let's crack this one open because this is probably my second favorite of the beers that I've tried today. There we go, that cracking open sound that I always love when you open the can for the first time. And a little bit of the beer spray comes out of the can. And again, a strong beer at 6.5%, as I mentioned before. Now we'll do a color test in a minute, but I'll just move these ones over. So I'll move these ones over here, put that one on the end, and we'll get them together. Now 6.5%, 5.5 I think that one was, just let me check, 5.5. This one was over the 6, 6.2, and this one was 6.5 as well. But as we can see, this one, the first one that I tried, still by far the darkest in color, I think, or at least that's what my eyes are telling me. So put those back over here, and let's try this one. Now, the story about this beer is that I recently visited Galicia. People that watch the channel regularly will know that I went to the city of Vigo and Pontevedra, and I had one of these beers while overlooking the Ria de Vigo, and it was a fantastic place to try this beer. So let's have a, a smell test. See if we can pick up any of the uh, smells or the characteristics of the beer. Not really, if you compare it with this one here, which was screaming fruit at me. But this one here, not so much. Let's have a taste. Mm, smooth. I will say that that's the smoothest one of the four that I have tasted. Now, in my opinion, We'll go through, we'll go backwards. And we'll start with this one here, which is the one that I have in front of me, La Mille Nueve, Mille Novecientos Seis, 1906, from the Hermanos Rivera Brewery up there in Galicia. Very good beer. A little bit more expensive than some of the beers that I've got on the table. I think this is the most expensive one, followed by this one, this one next, and this one, the cheapest of the four. But uh, this, nonetheless, is a very, very good beer. Mm. I would come back to that beer time and time again. The second last beer that I tried, Ambar Morena. As I said, a new addition to supermarket beers in Spain, and this is my favorite one. In fact, I'm going to give a ranking. That's what I'm going to do. So this one here, I would say 9 out of 10, a solid 9 out of 10, a very, very good beer. This one here, the one that I just tried, Nine and a half, not to give it a 10, because as I said, my favorite beer of the four on uh, display here today. The uh, second beer that I tried, the Cuth Campo Gran Reserva. Let me uh, get another taste. Not bad, probably uh, eight and a half, maybe nine if I'm being generous after a few beers, I would say that is a nine. And the first one that I tried today, the San Miguel Selecta, the strongest beer, at least in taste, and the uh, most uh, dense in color also. Let me try it again. Again, an eight and a half, but it depends on your personal taste. So these are the four beers that I've tried today. Stay tuned for another beer review. I'll do some uh, IPAs, which I have down on the floor there. So that'll be the next one, Spanish IPAs. And that is a beer that is really uh, come onto the market in recent times in leaps and bounds. So stay tuned for that. But uh, this one here, my favorite of the four that I have tried, and that is the beer that I am going to finish off now because it's nearly lunchtime and I'm thirsty. So questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Let me know if you have tried any of the beers that I have on the table here. Let me know if you have tried this one, which is my favorite or just in general, tell me which beers in Spain you like to drink. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.